Jimmy, uh, your impressions obviously was touched on the uh, living with him in Lawn Street and Mooney Ponds. I mean, what's the, uh, as, a, as a player, what were your, your first impressions of Stephen Kernahan? Well, I, we've uh, seen Sticks over there when he came over to uh, America with us for the first couple of trips and that. And uh, like he said, he probably didn't want to go on the first one, but he didn't want to miss one after the first one. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but uh, look, Stephen's been a wonderful ambassador for Carlton and. Uh, and that's the whole thing about it, the, 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 the bloke he is. And uh, that's why he warmed the hearts of all the people that are here tonight as a player and that. And um, as a family man and that, I, uh, I got on very well with his, the family. And uh, Harry stayed at our place a few times. And David, we also rock up. And all the friends used to come and stay at Lawn Street. There wasn't many who missed Lawn Street, actually. <laughs> but, um, you know, we had some uh, ripper times. I remember a funny one when... Uh, We'd been out, I think I was injured this night. Well, I was in, of course, it was a Friday night. I wouldn't have been out on a Friday. <laughs> and uh, Kenny Sheldon was out with me. I'd you know, been to one of the discos and I, I came home and they were being a little bit pestish and they wanted to get rid of us from the disco. So I said, I'm not going to you give me a dozen stubbies or something like that. And I want to go home in the limo. So they got us home in the limo and it had a tally in the back of the limo. And wouldn't believe it was an old John Wayne movie on in black and white, and uh, so was Kenny Sheldon and I sitting there and had a phone, the phone's just come out in that year, and, and so I rang Sticks up, I said, get out here, Sticks, you know, he liked getting woke up in the middle of the night, Sticks did. I said, what are you talking about? So out he walks in the middle of the night, I said, where is it? Out the front. So he walks out of a tower around him, nothing else on, in the back of the car watching the movie with us, and this bloke was ringing from uh, Chasers, he said, for Christ's sake, bring that limo back, I've got to get about 50 people home. <laughs> he said, these freaks won't get out of the car, <laughs> not till the movie's over. But Sticks would help out whenever he could, you know, and one of the funny ones was that uh, he trusted me a lot, Sticks, and he learnt sort of not to at the end. <laughs> <laughs> when he, uh, <coughs> he got this anonymous big parcel arrived at the door and I said, Sticks, what's this? He said, uh, he closed the bedroom door and had his old tape recorder going in there and I said, what in the God's going on here? So he said, mate, he said, I've got the strangest thing in the mail today you've ever seen in your whole life. And I said, oh, said, I'm only telling you and no one else. So we're going down to the training and uh, we put this in. He said, listen to this. He said, this is unbelievable. And uh, one of these girls, it wasn't the one from uh, America anyway, <laughs> but uh, he wishes she was in America. <laughs> she uh, had, had taped this thing and she said, Sticks, you remind me of a big black stallion running through of your mane, you know that big long area you had, your big mane <laughs> flowing in the wind. And I, this, is going to, this is going to train, I said, God almighty, Sticks, what's going on here? And he said, have a look at these photos. And I had some beautiful shots of it too, photos of herself, I don't, I don't know how she took them. She had them standing on chairs and doing all this, and I, he said, for Christ's sake, he said, don't let anyone know about this. I said, you're trusted with me, Sticks, you know that. <laughs> Did you go out to training? I said, I've got a bruised hoof today. I won't be going out. I've got Parco again. I wouldn't train. I said, I'll just uh, look after that and put that away. He said, yeah, if you, you change it. He said, you look after that, will you, buddy? Said, of course I will. <laughs> so when sticks come in, I had them plastered over the wall. <laughs> all these beautiful shots. And I had a big tape recorder. I've got a bloke to run home and grab a tape recorder. As he walked up the race, he's gone, and you remind me of a big black stallion. <laughs> he said, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> But he took it in the run and, you know, like it, was, it was fantastic. And that's what the bloke is. He's just a genuine, great person. And that's why he's such beloved by the Carlton Football Club. And not only that, other people all over the Victorian, all over Australia.